So before I sort of get right into the vector adding, let's just sort of do another quick little review about vectors in case there's anyone that, you know, hasn't figured it out yet. Or maybe they weren't here. So a vector is a quantity which has both magnitude and direction. Examples of uh, vectors include displacement, velocity, acceleration, force. When I say magnitude, I mean the number part, the size, how long the arrow is. That's the magnitude. To fully describe one of these vector quantities, it's necessary to tell both the magnitude and the direction. And there are three types of directional notation, all of which are on the exam, and you're not allowed to say you didn't teach us that, because I'll point back to today, February the 22nd. 30 degrees south of west, west 30 south, and 240, the bearing method, all mean the same, the same, same thing. thing. Are you sure? Pretty sure. Pilots use the bearing method that has north at zero with the directions rotating clockwise. Now, interestingly enough, the mathematicians, anyone ever started with unit circle yet? Anyone? Yeah? Oh, yeah, Mervyn? Probably one of your favorite things ever, right? Unit circle? Anyone that says that is a liar. Because they start zero there. It's, you know, they start zero there, don't they, Mervyn? Yeah. And they go yeah. that way. The reason they do that has to do with the calculator. Uh, in the old days, when you didn't have calculators, if they put the zero there, they can do all those trig functions, sine, cos, and tan. Makes it a little bit easier. Okay, that's why they do it. And some math books like to teach vectors using that method, and they are wrong. Okay, real pilots, real navigation people use zero as north, and they go clockwise. Okay, and there's a link there if you don't believe it. Yeah, it actually. Okay, so is this where your sheet kicks in? Okay, so that's kind of the review up to there. So let's talk today about vector addition. So most of us are accustomed to the following form of mathematics. If I said 6 plus 8 is 14, you would all hopefully agree. <laughs> hopefully. But what if I also said 6 plus 8 could be 10, could be 2, or could be 5? You might think I'm crazier than you usually think I am. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. When we become students of physics and approach the task of adding vector quantities, we soon become aware of the fact that the addition of two vector quantities with magnitudes of 6 and 8 will not necessarily result in an answer of 14. It might, but it might not. The rules for adding vector quantities are different from the rules for adding two quantities arithmetically. When I say arithmetically, I just mean like, you know, 6 apples plus 8 apples is 14 apples. Or potatoes or whatever you got. Um, thus, 6 plus 8 will not necessarily be equal to 14 if we're talking about vectors. You probably don't have anything to write in there just yet, right? Okay. Vectors are quantities that include a direction, and you should hopefully already know that. As such, the addition of two or more vectors must take into account that the quantities being added have a directional characteristic. In other words, you got to add the directions. When you're adding vectors, you have to account for the directions. You've got to add the directions. I see people jumping ahead here and worrying about copying something down instead of actually listening and learning. So I'm going to do that. That's good. There are a number of methods for carrying out the addition of two or more vectors. And I'm going to show you basically one, the simplest one, I think. The most common method is the head-to-tail method of vector addition. Head to tail, or I like to say tip to tail, which is exactly what you did yesterday without me telling you to. It's the most intuitive, it's the one that makes the most amount of sense. You simply put the vectors tip to tail or head to tail. Using such a method, the first vector is drawn to scale in the appropriate direction, and the second vector is drawn such that its tail is positioned at the head of the first vector. So this right here is the tip to tail, tip of this arrow to the tail of the second one, or head to tail. Right? I've added those vectors, tip to tail, which is what you guys did yesterday, right? What you didn't do yesterday, all you did was you sort of added them together and you said, well, this is where I would end up, right? But you didn't do this next step, which is fine. I didn't ask you to. And the next step is this. The sum of the two such vectors, or the, the answer to the addition, is then represented by a third vector, which stretches from the tail of the first to the head of the second. And this third vector is known as the resultant. The answer. 
When you add two numbers together, the answer is called the sum. sum. When you add two vectors together, the answer is called the sum. resultant. Resultant or vector sum. It is the result of adding the two vectors. The resultant is the vector sum of the two individual vectors. Of course, the actual magnitude and the direction of the result is dependent upon the direction of between the two individual vectors have. In other words, you got to add the length and you got to add the direction. And it looks like that. That wouldn't be 14. It would not be 14. Right? It would only be 14 if the vectors are Yeah, in the same line, right? We call that collinear. I don't, but nerds do. So this red one right here is known as the resultant. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here because I have this, this is a GIF here, and then I can sort of, um, I can slow it down. I think I said GIF. Oh. That's sort of the theory behind it. Um, now we got to sort of show you the steps. Now, here's one of my favorite, I was playing around one day with this animation stuff. It's kind of fun, so I, I do it just to show you to make me feel good because I spent all this time learning how to do it. Okay, so the question often arises to the importance of the order in which the vectors are added. For instance, if three vectors are added, let's call them A, B, and C, will you get a different resultant if you go uh, in a different order? Will A plus B plus C be the same result as C plus B plus A, or B plus A plus C? Well, let's just click on play here and see. So there's A. I made this myself. There's B. There's C. So where's the resultant? Right there. That's the result. All the results of lives are right there. Pretty sure all that. C plus B plus A. What do you know? Same R. B plus C plus A. What do you know? It's the same. Does the order matter? The order doesn't matter. I repeat, the order doesn't matter. I'm saying it a third time. The order doesn't matter. Guaranteed, within the next two weeks, someone in the room will say, Mr. Bennett, what order? Does it matter which order I put them in? Guaranteed. Wait, why doesn't it matter? You end up in the same spot. We did this yesterday. Oh, yeah. Doesn't matter how many times they do it. Right? You're just adding. Someone said it really well over here. 3 plus 2 is 5, whether it's 3 plus 2 or 2 plus 3, right? Was it you? Okay. Can you guys find this on your page? We must be getting close to done here, aren't we? Sure. Like this part. Okay. Like this? Yep. I apologize for the. This is how physics goes. Some days you're sort of doing stuff and lots of that, and other days you listen to me lots. Just the way it works. Observe the three planes in the picture below. Each plane... Stay with me, guys. Cole, stay with me. Each plane is heading south at the speed of 100 kilometers an hour. Each plane flies amidst a wind which blows at 20 kilometers an hour. In the first case, the plane encounters a tailwind, which means from behind of 20, and the combined effect of the tailwind in this plane speed provides a resultant velocity of 120. So this is, you guys should probably put this in here, this is 100, this is 20, for a resultant of 120. Right? 100 plus 20, resultant 120. You're flying with the wind. Oh, so it doesn't matter if it's like kilometers per hour or... Nope. Newtons, meters per second, doesn't matter. Same principles. Headwind, which means you are, in the second case, the plane encounters a headwind from the front of 20 kilometers an hour. The combined effect of the headwind and the plane speed provide a resultant velocity of 80. So here we've got 100, and we've got 20 going backwards. Now, I don't like this picture for this reason. That little red vector is placed tip to tip, isn't it? Yep. So it should really be like that, right? Like over, it, it tip to tail, right? From there. And then it kind of goes back, which makes this length here, and I'll put it in black, 80, right? 
that couldn't quite draw it to scale. In the third case, the plane encounters a crosswind from the side of 20 kilometers an hour. The combined effect of the headwind and the plane speed provide a resultant velocity of 102 kilometers per hour directed at an angle of 11.3 degrees east of south. And again, the little red guy shouldn't be there. He should be there, which makes the resultant from there. So again, now, an important point here that I, I quite often from year to year neglect to mention. I get a few kids that think that the plane, I'm going to try to redraw this plane here. They think that the plane goes, when I draw it like that, they're thinking that the plane goes like this and then like that. Is that what happens? No, the plane just goes like this, right? Like like a golf ball. If you hit a golf ball in the wind, it doesn't go like towards the hole and then like that at the end, right? Yeah, I've seen your golf ball. Right? But it's going at that angle, right? So don't get that idea. Okay. These three resultant velocities can be determined using simple rules of vector addition. In the case of the crosswind, Pythagorean theorem and Sakatoa. Have you seen Sakatoa before? Sakatoa, sine and opposite hypotenuse, right? All that jazz are going to be used. Okay. Now, for some reason, I have this as two separate files, which makes no sense, but it is what it is. Okay. Yes, lots of listing today. I apologize. Are right, you on this next page now? If you haven't flipped, if I can still see the plane on your page, that means you haven't flipped over yet. I say if I can still see the three planes on your page, I can tell you haven't flipped over yet. But what? Oh, you were doodling. Huh? Well, that is important. Okay. One of those situations where it's so simple it's kind of complicated. Adding vectors on the same line. When two vectors are in the same direction, it's easy to add them. Place them head to tail or simply measure the total length or just add them together. 8 plus 6 is? Yeah, 8 plus 6, 14, right? Yeah, I did. And I have to show it to you because I'm so proud of myself. And then, and then it gets all squiggly like that. Okay, I'm going to ask, does the order of the vectors are, are in, does it matter? What if I go 6 plus 8? Well, you know, 14. What if they're not on the same line? How do you add them? You still put them tip to tail and measure the resultant. 8 plus 6. Draw the resultant from where you start to where it ends and color it red. That's or not. Great. Now, some people like to do that dash line because it kind of shows that it's the uh, it's different. Some oh, it is red now. Some textbooks will put it like two lines, like sort of like a, a, a hollowed out arrow kind of thing. There's different ways to show it, right? I don't really care. If you have to, just label it with a Pirate's favorite letter. The resultant vector can be measured or calculated algebraically. If the vectors are perpendicular. Now, why did I go all crazy like that? It's underlined, bold, and italics because, oh my goodness, all through these many years that I've been standing here, you will not believe how many students. Use Pythagoras when the arrows are not perpendicular. This is what you get on the test when you do that. You get a frowny face. And if you show me that in class, I will literally give you a frowny face. I will give you this. Okay? And as much as I jump up and down and say it, there's still people that are going to do it. And I don't know why. I wish I could... I'm I don't know why. It's just a period. <laughs> <laughs> Hulk smash. <laughs> okay. So, so when the arrows are perpendicular, we're just going to use our good friend Pythagoras and basic trig. Let's do an example. Let's do an example. Do you have this? Yeah. 
We didn't. Excellent. We didn't. We didn't. Wow, three blocks. That's going to be hard to draw. Okay, so what do we do? A man walks three kilometers north, 1.5 kilometers east. What is his result in displacement? Now, because it says solved by Pythagoras, do my arrows have to be to scale? They do not. They do not. Okay, because it's just a it's just a simple matter. So we're gonna go three north. Then 1.5 east, so tip to tail. So from there, from the from the tip of that one, we're going to go 1.5 east. Okay, and then the resultant is from where you start to where you end. Label it with the pirate's favorite letter. See, gracias. C. Yeah. In Spanish. All right. Now what do I write? Because that's because that's the hypotenuse. I'm going to write r squared is equal to three squared plus one point five squared. And here's where the calculator that you're going to need every day for the rest of physics. You're going to need it. Basement light. 3 squared plus 1.5 squared is 11.25. Okay. And now we're going to take the square root. R is the square root of 11.25. <laughs> Three point four. Three point four what? Kilometers. Kilometers is right. How come? Because these are in kilometers. Hey, 3 well, three point. Yeah, three point three five. Oh yeah, that's three point four, right? Uh, no, not 3.35. Are we rounding up? In we'll round up, yeah. Oh yeah, no truncating around here. You know what I do to truncators? You get 27 out of 30, you get 0 on the test. Well, because 27 out of 30, that's like 0 0.9. Round, truncate that, that's just a 0. It's not 90. Right? Truncate it. 0. So you got to get 100 to get... Exactly. You don't truncate your round. All right. Am I done? Can I put my feet up and uh, yeah. relax? No, 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 no. You need to find the... How do we do that? We use the angle theta, which you've probably seen before in math. Opposite over adjacent. Correct. Opposite, right? Adjacent. Which one is that? That's the tan, right? So you would write something like tan theta is opposite. Let me do it sort of complete for this one, and I'll, I'll reduce it in a bit. Let's write OPP over ADG, opposite over adjacent. I don't expect you have to do this every time, but for the first one, I'm going to do it this way, just so people can sort of see the full explanation. So then you would write tan theta is opposite. 1.5, the adjacent is 3. Now, what's the next step you write? How do you write theta equals? Well, if you're solving an equation like 2x equals 10, you have to do the opposite of times by 2, right? So what's the opposite of 10? Well, the opposite of 10 is called inverse 10, which is written as 10 minus 1. 10 minus 1 means the inverse of 10, the opposite. So 1.5 over 3. So, And I'm thinking you all did this in grade 9. But I would suggest you get the calculator out because you might need a refresher. Right? And some calculators are different than others. So most of sort of the modern ones, calculators, will go second function tan. But we'll make sure you're in degrees. 
I was getting grade 12 did the entire exam in radians. I had to call her back to fix it. 26.2. Yeah, so second function 10 bracket 1.5 divided by 3 equals, and you should get 26.6, right? 26.6. Now, some calculators you have to do it the other way. You got to go 1.5 divided by 3 and then second function 10, right? So you just got to know which way your calculator works, sort of forwards or backwards. And I'm still not done because I also have to say now, what are the directions associated with this? Okay, well from here, Sarah, which way did I go? Which way am I looking first? I'm looking north, right? So uh, this is going to be north, and I'm going to round that angle to, to a whole number. I'm going to round that to 27. So north, 27, and then east. North, 27, east. Don't worry, you're going to have lots of practice. No. It's really just an application of something you already know. Really, right? Try this one right now. You guys overall look like you're doing pretty good here. Uh, a plane speed is 100 kilometers an hour east. The wind is blowing straight south at 25 kilometers an hour. Determine the resultant velocity. So I had a couple people ask me, do you need the direction? And the answer is yes, because velocity is a vector. So you need the direction. Does it matter which one you do first? Are you sure? I'm sure. It doesn't matter. So you could go this, 100 east. And then 25 south. Okay, I see a few people not looking, not watching there. Or you could go 25 first and then 100. You'll get the same answer with one small exception, which I will show you right away. Okay, guys should watch because I, I know the questions that are coming. I know them. I'm going to hit the answers before you ask the questions. And if you watch, so. R, R, yeah, you know what's coming. R squared is going to be 100 squared plus 25 squared. Do I need to do that whole A squared equals B squared? Do I need to write that out? No. no. You can just write R squared equals 100 squared plus 25 squared. I would hope you can do that step all at once on your calculator. 100 squared is going to be like 10,000 plus 25 squared is going to be 625, and you get... 10,000, 625, that's R squared, and then you got to take the square root of that. By the time you get to grade 12, you can just do this all in one step. I don't need to see all this work. You will take the square root of that. I get 103. Does that seem reasonable? It's going to have to be more than 100. It's going to have to be more than 25, right? Because the hypotenuse is always the longest side, exactly. Will you get the same value over here? 25 yeah. squared plus 100 squared. Of course you will. Yeah. Course you the will. thing that you will get different is this. This is theta here, and this is theta here. I'm going to put this theta in red. Okay? So if I'm doing blue theta, now I let my grade 11s do this. You don't have to do all that tan stuff. You can just write theta equals inverse tan, and then just read off opposite over adjacent. So opposite of the blue one is going to be 25. And adjacent to the blue one is the 100, right? So theta equals inverse tan, second function tan, bracket, 25 over 100. And you get, I get 14. Okay, I'll put it in blue. Well, let's just go whole numbers. 14.03 is right. And that's going to be, which direction did I go first? Cool. From here, which direction am I going first? I'm going east. east. I'm going south. So east, 14 south. Ooh. Now, if you want, if you've done it with the red theta, your inverse tan 
is going to be opposite over adjacent or 100 divided by 25 and you're going to get a different angle aren't you couldn't you just put that one in the other corner say again couldn't you just put the red thing in the other corner? Uh, okay, good question. Let me finish this first. This is going to be 76. The 10? How are you going to calculate it? How? With the protractor? We have, we have 100, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's not the angle, that's just the tan of the angle, Leo. You have to do the second function tan. I don't know, but like, can we keep the... Oh, oh, no, I need both. You need both, yeah. You need that and you need this. You need them both. Yeah, no, good Good question. need them both. Okay, so this 76, hang on, I need about 30 more seconds here. This 76 would be, actually, which direction do I go first? South and then east. Listen carefully. These are the same angle. Yep. They're the same. I have both answers on my answer key. Either one is fine. Because the order doesn't matter. Either angle is fine. Okay. Now, Ty said, could I not just put it down here? And then it would be the same thing, right? But the yeah. problem with that is that's not the angle that you start and go at. That's the angle that you, once you get there, you turn around and look and see where you came. Right? Oh, so God. I'm glad you brought that up. Because the angle is, Cody, the angle is always where you start. The angle is always where you start. The angle is always where you start. Why did I repeat it three times? Because I get people asking me that question all the time. Pavlov? Yeah, I'm, I guess. Conditioning. Right. Okay. There are, there are two more practice questions there. I strongly suggest you do them. I'm glad to help you with those. Tomorrow, uh, I think it's vector subtraction, I can't remember, which is tricky. And then there's a vector golf assignment that is hands in to see if you can pay attention. So I strongly suggest, if you've got 14 minutes, I suggest you do the last couple ones there and ask me for help.